thanks for tuning in to You Are Wanted for Faith-Filled Hour of Wisdom and Wealth from a Biblical Perspective, hosted by yours truly, Pastor Deborah Valentine and friends live from Long Island, New York, AM 1240 WTBB or live stream at www.am1240wtbb.com every Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. Many thanks to the love of my life and my Savior, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, who welcomes you into the Beloved and says, you are wanted. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. The past is over. The light is turned on. Reject rejection. Doubt your doubts. The shackles are loose. You're coming out. You are wanted. All right, all right. So good morning, and it's my privilege to be joined on this, the kickoff show of You Are Wanted, a special who is a singer, an actor, a television host, and a vessel of honor set apart for every good work. My friend and my sister in the Lord, let's welcome Jeannie Ortega. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Hi, good morning, Jeannie. How are you today? Good morning. I'm doing wonderful. What an incredible introduction. I love that you are wanted. So That's beautiful. Right. It's, it's so good. Come on now. Well, happy New Year to you, and may happy the Lord cause you to prosper in everything you do. Uh, we're just so blessed to, to have you. You know, we've known each other for a number of years now, and... Um, I can't thank you enough for joining me today on the uh, on the show. My honor. <laughs> All right. So now, thank you, Trevor. He's helping me out here in the station. Colin from Long Island, New York. You know, um, you have such a great story. I I can't tell you what an inspiration you are to me. Uh, you just do so many things, the acting, the singing. You're just working it out for God's glory. Um, you are a writer. Um, you, you ministered so beautifully with me at Women of Worth here on Long Island, and then you were gracious enough to host me on your show at TBN Salsa. Uh, and by the way, folks that are listening in, you can catch Jeannie. I think that's every Tuesday and Thursday at 5. Is that right, Jeannie? Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> It's awesome. Um, so what we'd like to do as we get into this show, and we're speaking about 2019 and how we can just cast a vision, leave the past behind, and we're also going to uh, do some cool things today like <laughs> say goodbye to the past, those things that uh, we don't need anymore, uh, we're going we're gonna to shred them. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Amen. The paper shredder. <laughs> Goodbye, Satan. Goodbye. The thing about a shredding machine is that when you put something, there it is. <laughs> when you put something in a shredding machine, you know, it could be the deed to your house. It could be uh, a dollar bill. It could be a stock or a bond. Mm -hmm. It could be, um, you know, anything of value. Once you put it in there, whatever you're bound to is gone. Mm -hmm. It's gone forever. You mm -hmm. can't put it back. No. So when we put something in the shredder today, what we're saying symbolically is, is that it's not coming back. That rejection, that doubt, that fear, that woulda, shoulda, coulda. Um, I know some of our listeners understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. We don't want that in our lives. And we're going to say goodbye to that. So, Jeannie, I want you to talk, tell us a little bit about your past, I know you're no, no longer living there, but it's a testament to God's goodness and, and the lifestyle you came out of as a pop star and, and that whole running with, um, you know, the entertainment group that just had a lifestyle a little bit different from what you're doing today. Uh, we're so glad that you decided to use your talents for the Lord and for his kingdom. Amen. Sure. Um I'd say about seven, I was about seven years old when I realized the impact that music had on um, people. And um, I didn't, you know, I didn't really grow up in a very religious home. Um, we had the, the faith of the family, but it wasn't really, you know, it's, we, we didn't really practice. Um, we just did kind of, re you know, religion, you know, religious activities. 
on, you know, Easter and Christmas and, and communion and confirmation, things like that. But um, it wasn't something that, you know, was um, something that we had to do every single week. And, and, you know, there wasn't that strong push for it, <clears throat> which, to be honest, um, I'm not upset about because I feel like everything that happened with me spiritually really was organic. Um, although I was taught very early from my parents to pray, and um, there was a Sunday school in New York, um, so if anybody lived in the the, the city of New York, um, Brooklyn, the Bronx, um, Queens, then you might have heard of Yogi Bear Sunday School uh, with Metro Ministries, and they would come every weekend and pick up the kids, um, and we had no idea it was for Sunday school, we just knew it was so much fun while we were there, we felt good. But every time they picked us up and dropped us off, we would pray before we, we started. We would learn an incredible Bible lesson. We didn't really understand what that meant, but we knew it was a good story. And then we would pray before we leave. And I think those type of things were just instilled in me early. So when uh, just as early as seven years old, when I started to kind of feel like, man, you know, uh, things inside aren't the way I, like, as peaceful as they should be or what I see on TV. Oh and, wow, it's seven and, years old. Yeah, it's just, well, I think that's what happens. We start so early watching TV and fantasizing mm-hmm. about the lives that we want. And mm-hmm. when we, and when our real life doesn't reflect that, we become disenchanted. And that happened to me very early. And as mm-hmm. early as seven to me, you know, whispered, just end, just end it. Why are you even here? Why are you alive? Whoa! You don't have the life. Yeah, if you don't have the oh. life that you want, then just end it. And um, as early as that, I started to battle with thoughts like that, and God used music to pull me out of it. So after listening to a, a really sad Mariah Carey song, she's actually a mm-hmm. Long Island girl too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, like I said, I didn't have any Christian kind of I, any ideas. I didn't even know there was worship music or or any of that type of stuff. So God used one of her songs to help me kind of shift my focus from suicide to maybe you can sing and help other young girls like you. Yes, and yes. The, God has a plan for your life, yeah. and for any listeners, whether you're seven or seventy, I would say hold on, Jeannie. I'm sorry. I I just. No, I just feel like this is really powerful. I mean, we this this is amazing that God intervened. He intercepted. You had an encounter with yeah. God because those thoughts are very real. They're very strong and and some people today may be experiencing it. Sadly we see all over the news, whether it's just your average mom or dad or just you know, someone who's not famous. Um yeah an everyday person that takes their own life or Jesus. or it could be somebody in the news or in the media or in Hollywood that we think has it all, has reached the epitome of fame and fortune and therefore should be happy. Yet one common denominator is the enemy of our souls is trying to tell us that we don't have any value. But I would say, <laughs> that is too, we got the wrong track. I would say you are wanted. That's right. That's right. For anyone who's experiencing those feelings of, um, like you did, Jeannie, that you should end it all. Say, just wait one second. You're wanted. You're needed in the kingdom of God. So, So what happened after that? So my my focus shifted, and I was determined, I'm going to do this. I want to help other people feel better the way I felt better through music. And um, a long story short, um, mm-hmm. you know, a couple years later, sitting in a taxi cab, singing along to the radio, the cab driver was also a limo driver, and um, he was just like, I don't, you know, he's like, you're a beautiful young lady and you sound so amazing. Do you have any music, any any CDs? And I'm like, well, I have my karaoke recordings. You know, I'm like, I, I'm determined. 
And um, he's just like, well, you know what? I don't normally do this, but I, I drive around famous managers and, and people in the industry. Maybe I can give off, give over it's your incredible. your stuff, yeah, to somebody. You're in a cab. You're in a cab, and this, he also is a limo driver. <laughs> only in New York, York City. <laughs> only in New York City. I'm telling you what. <laughs> only in God's plan. Yes, and and that's really how it happened. A few weeks later, I was contacted by one of the biggest. Um, managers in the music industry at the time and the rest is history at age 16 i was signed to a major record company hollywood records um which is a subdivision of disney the entire powerhouse of disney yeah and um at that time because of my upbringing because of where i was from from brooklyn new york the tough girl bad girl kind of you know, had to be that to survive in the streets of Brooklyn, especially growing up. Um, I I kind of went to the labels with that persona, and they loved it, and they that's who they signed. They wanted the bad girl, right? Who, who you know, right. she was deep enough to have things to say, which I did. Mm-hmm. You know, and I still kind of always try to to turn my my stuff and make it a little bit more inspiring. But I had no idea about a savior. I had no idea about a hope. I just knew that God needed to be real because life was super hard and I needed right. him to be real. Right. And he was there when I needed to cry and that's it. Um, so yeah, that's what yeah. I took into the music industry, you know, was signed, mm-hmm. then had a top billboard hit song. Um, you know, my, my album was even voted number one on the billboard heat secret charts when it came out, right. no place like Brooklyn. And I just toured the country, you know, opened up for Rihanna back when I was the bad girl and she was still nice and, you know, good. <laughs> but then she, she wanted to claim that title after that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it seemed like the, the roles reversed because as I was living this life and thinking, okay, this is what's going to fulfill. This is the answer to the unrest that's in my soul. You know, here I am. I find myself now 19 years old, 20 years old, and... I'm still just as broken and feeling suicidal again and not understanding why all this money and success and and this new lifestyle has not affected my life and my inner turmoil. That's right. It doesn't, none of those things can fulfill the, the void in our hearts. There's, there's a special peace in our hearts that only the love of God can fill. We can only find rest and peace in Jesus Christ. The peace the world gives us does can't compare to the peace that God gives us. So true. And I'm so thankful that you did find it because we know that people are searching. They're searching in every industry, not just artists and entertainers, but everyone is searching. We were all meant to search, but the Bible says that he who seeks shall find God is not near to us. He draws close to those who are broken. He, excuse me, God's not far from us. He draws close to those who are broken heart and it seems like you know even at that age 19 years old when on the outside it would seem that you had it all you had the money the mercedes the mansion the men whatever yeah. people describe um or ascribe to fame and fortune really we know that success is being in the center of god's will and we really can't Amen. find that peace without it so true so very true and you know god i want to say this so you know even though i did not have that true um idea of who god was he Mm -hmm. pursued me every step of the way it's almost as he allowed me to live the life that i wanted to live so that i can see that there was no need there was no fulfillment there was no satisfaction in that life you know, because I, as I, you know, of course, once you get saved and, and you really see God, you're like, wow, God, you are always there. And, you know, he protected me from so many things growing mm-hmm, up in yeah. the music industry as a teenage girl. Mm-hmm. You know, now there's this whole popular Me Too movement. Well, there wasn't a movement back then. It was part of the culture. Right. You know, we we looked away and we looked down and we, we said nothing because we just figured, well, that's just the show business, you know. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's the industry I grew up in. And as a teenager, you know, working 
in school all day and then working in a studio all night with you know random uh, people who yeah who have their own issues and their own need for a god yeah. and um you know I dealt with a lot of that type of stuff but I look back and it could have been so much worse it could have been so much worse the Lord clears us and you know sometimes I think I'm just going to thank God that I'm in my right mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I I am not in a hospital bed. I'm not in a mental ward. Thank God that I can worship him and praise him. And all the days I have left, I'm just going to say, you know what? I got to give God praise. I got to give him praise because, you know, but by the grace of God, yeah. there go I. And here you are today. I mean, I'm just so glad that you're living out your destiny, that your life is being fulfilled. It doesn't mean that you don't have challenges or things don't pop up that are surprising or unexpected or even um, difficult. But um, I'm so glad that, you know, you realize God is on your side. He is the Lord of your life, and he, you're able to fulfill everything that he's called you to do. And I know that you're doing it right now. I, I just saw this week, congratulations, a really great article in Charisma Magazine. Yes. What a, that um, was such a blessing. I was just like, yeah, I'm just yeah. like, I'm at the point now in my life, in my walk with the Lord, and this took a long time to get here, but where I'm just like, Lord, whatever you want, like, I'm not trying, you know, we're New Yorkers, and I think in a New York, like the New York state of mind is to hustle, hustle, hustle until you get where you need to be, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I have given that up. I'm not doing that. I want That's the right. Lord to lead where he wants me to be. So I, I haven't been, you know, that self-promoting person that I used to be. Um, I just want to be in God's perfect will and to be blessed with things like that when he does it, when it just comes out of the blue. It was, it was a super, super beautiful surprise that they would, you know, just even listen it to was. my story and honor me the way they did. It, it was a blessing to me. Now, we have a couple of your songs. We couldn't get them all. I downloaded a bunch from Amazon. By the way, folks, you can uh, follow Jeannie on Twitter at, at JeannieOrtega. You can download her songs on Amazon. And you know what? Right now, I'd like to play um, this song. I, I don't think it's the same one you had in mind, but it, it, it really spoke to me. It's called Never Been Hurt by mm-hmm. Jeannie Ortega. I've been used at the top of my list of excuses At broken, mistreated, and bruises To the things that I've got to get through
we're here with Jeannie Ortega. And Jeannie, um, you know, today I want to talk about going into the new year. As you see your vision for the new year, there's some things we want to leave behind. Isn't that true? Mm, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I know that. I know that I need to work on some things, and it's amazing because sometimes people will have, for example, um, a long list of, um, you know, uh, things that they want to do, and resolutions, but we know that we can't do that. It's not by might nor by power, mm -hmm. but by God's Spirit that we're able to do these things. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to say, by God's Spirit, we're going to move forward into the new year. And we're going to say goodbye to the things of the past. So we look back at a testimony of a life um, that started out, you as a child, feeling a tug at your heart at a very young age, but also feeling a tug in another direction to end it all. And even as you grew, and it's, it's you know, if I can paraphrase, it's amazing how you really sensed the need for a Savior, yet you were experiencing the high life that just didn't live up to what it was all cut out to be. So... Um, we're so glad that now God has you in a place where you're singing, you feel fulfilled, you're in ministry, yep. you're on TV weekly, um, and I'm so thankful that what you have to give is more than just a song, but it's, it's a message, and your message is one of love, and, and our message here is uh, putting God in, in first place. It's yeah. um, a lifestyle of worship, wisdom, and love from a biblical perspective, and might I say that? You know, the wealth isn't talking about money in the bank, right? Because we know that doesn't fulfill. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about having material things. But really, there's a richness of God's love. There's putting things of value in order. And so what we want to do is right now, as an audience, if anyone here wants to call in and participate in this conversation, the number is 516-623-1240. And we'd like to talk about what we're going to put in order. Um, I know that for myself, uh, there's some things that I want to get rid of. I want to get rid of all the kinds of strife um, and bitterness and fear. I'm going to put all of that in the shredder. And I'm going to say it's gone. We're going to, we're going to say goodbye to all kinds of things that we're not going to take down. We're not taking back the fear of the past. We're not taking back all kinds of failures. We're not taking back all kinds of memories for anyone who is experiencing uh, just a replay and a reminder of those words that hurt you, those words that condemned you. We're going to break down those strongholds um, in Jesus' name, and we're going to say it's the truth that sets us free. I know a lot of people quote that verse, the truth that sets us free, but it really is. It's the truth of um, the Word of God that says that you are His beloved. You are a jewel in His crown. Um, you have a plan and a purpose. And you are a person of worth. You are wanted. You are wanted. So, um, you are wanted. <laughs> you are wanted. <laughs> so, Jeannie, um, yeah. tell, tell me going forward, what is what is the vision that you have for 2019? And also tell me, what are you going to put in that shredder? <laughs> um, well, I actually did want to say, bringing it back to the moment where I left off from um, just that broken girl. And, and, and then, you know, I, at that point I was invited to a Christian church and, you know, felt the, the power of the Holy Spirit and, and the love and a love that reached deeper than ever and ever and ever before. You know, I knew at that moment I had a choice to embrace what I was feeling um, or just go back to the life that I knew. And, you know, I did for, for a couple of years. I, I kind of lived both ways because I didn't know that it was a trade off that needed to happen. I had no, you know, idea of what mm -hmm. becoming a Christian was. Mm -hmm. But when I finally realized, and, and just even now, and that, that was, you know, um, that was 11 years ago, <laughs> you know, 12 years ago. Oh, wow. Um, but now, just even coming into 2019, the Lord, you know, he's, he's, he's taught me and my husband such rich, rich lessons. And sometimes they come through really, really hard life experiences. And 
um, you know, we've we've now lost a third child mm-hmm. in a in a row um, to miscarriage, and you know that type of stuff. It just shakes you to the core, your stability, mm-hmm. your foundation. You're you're trying to figure out what's the point of it all. If we were made to, you know, to 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 get together and and, and multiply the earth and things like that, mm-hmm. and and it doesn't look like it looks like for everyone else, at least, you know, that's what you think. And um, right, the enemy would have us think, you know, mm-hmm. I'm the only one. Yeah, and and because it doesn't look like what you know or what you see, you start to go down this really negative road. But mm-hmm. what God has been able to do in us and through us in this season of so much loss and devastation, you know, obviously there's been so much blessings as well. Like God is so good because he'll, you know, he's, he's cushioning this entire process for us with his grace and his just, just knowing and being there and loving us through it. But he's also blessed us and multiplied other areas of our life so incredibly. But the, the lesson in this season is, you know, embracing really my heritage in him as a royal That's priesthood, right. a chosen generation, a new yes. creation in Christ. And, you know, I got saved now 12 years ago, but I feel like it wasn't until recently that I've truly, like, said goodbye to the past. You know, a lot of times as Christians, we we continue to live as a product of our past, maybe we say, okay, God, you've forgiven my sin. You've, you know, helped me through this. And I know that you're there. You acknowledge him in that way, but you don't acknowledge the fact that not only has he done that, but he's given you a new life in Christ Jesus. So you're no longer identified by the things that happen to you. Awesome. And a lot of times we'll carry the baggage of things that happen to us from a childhood all the way until we die and make that talking our identity. Yeah. yeah, we make that our identity, but our identity yeah. is not that. The Lord calls us his, a royal generation, you know, a, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. He yes. calls us heirs and joint heirs with God. And he adopted us and grafted us in to his to what he has for us. But we act like foster kids. But we're not. Come on. Come we're on. adopted. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And that's got to change in 2019. Yeah. You know, I, I tell people in a nutshell, you can't drive down the Southern State Parkway looking backwards. Mm-hmm. You're going to get in a wreck. There's, right. no way you're, there's no way you're going to get to your destination, at least right. not safely or in one piece. Come on, let's stop looking backwards. We, the only way to break those chains, we can't do it in the flesh, the only way to break the soul ties, painful past memories, yep. um, and anything else that's kept us bound, even the, you know, uh, regrets or um, whatever in the past that we wish we could fix, I want to tell you that um, when our plan A doesn't work, Let's try God's plan. He's He's a God of order. He has a plan, and it's so true that His plan is to adopt us in. Yeah. And it's an awesome uh, feeling because what happens is that whole idea of being adopted in, it's like a legal right now that you have. Yeah, and I don't know if you know this, adopted, mm-hmm. being to be adopted means never to give back. When you adopt, when, when, any, person, when any person decides to adopt a child, they, it, you can never legally give that child no. back. <laughs> never. And God never. uses that word so often to describe what He's done to us. He's not giving us back, so we shouldn't look back. We shouldn't live like the foster kids who did not get this incredible new right. life. In right. Life. Or say I don't deserve it, or to say, well, you know, it, it's just something in the past that that's going to keep me from being equal to all of us, the other of the other children that God has. No. Actually, yeah. the Bible says we're joint heirs with Christ. That's so, It's so awesome. What a great revelation to know that we're wanted. And I just want to say that for anyone who's dealing with any hurt or bitterness, we all have those things. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, we're dealing with people that have severe problems, but there could just be one slight um, rift in a relationship or one small um, crack 
in a in a union that you have or a, a relationship or a friendship that you have and and those things could be because of a word said or because of a deed done or just some kind of impasse that you have and I just want to say that that forgiveness is the key to freedom yeah. forgiveness is the key to freedom um, and so we can't do these things on our own we can ask God to help us to free us from the memories of the past and also from those things that, as the Bible says, so easily beset us so that we're way down and we're heavy laden. And right now, Jimmy, I want to hear this song. I think we got it now. We had a couple of <laughs> mishaps before. Here we go. Amen. I think this is You Are God by yes. Jimmy Ortega. Let's enjoy this, friends. I've had too many days thinking I've had to have all the Taking on what was not mine to take and it's wearing me down I've had too many fears, I've cried too many tears Losing way too much sleep every night So it's here I surrender the fight that was not mine to
that was You Are Cat by Jenny Ortega. Jeannie, that was awesome. I love the message of that song. And, mm. you know, I think that you're led by the spirit. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do in our own intention and our own strength, but there's nothing like being led by the spirit. And I yeah. totally hear that in your music and in your message, you know. Um, I think that uh, as we're wrapping up the show, I, I just want to give listeners... Um, you know, you have the opportunity to call in, 516-623-1240, uh, or you can, uh, if you're leaving your radio and you need to find another way, you can also, I want to remind you, go on to www.am1240wgbb.com uh, and you can uh, watch it that way as well. So I think that we do have a caller on the line. Uh, go ahead, Brother Trevor, tell me who is that. Darlene, okay, let's hear Darlene. Hi, Darlene, you are wanted. All right, Happy New Year. We love you, Darlene. Yeah, you are wanted. I know, I know you love Jeannie. Yeah, she's awesome. I can't um, hear her on my end. <laughs> yeah, I, okay, so. So you know what? It's going to be hard right now to have technically have everybody speaking at one time, but um, I'll, I'll relay the message, Darlene. I'm wishing you a blessed 2019, and I just also want to say that uh, God has a great plan for your life. The past is over. The page has turned. And now we're going to just say, Lord, um, you know, I think the best way to start, really, Darlene, for all of us, not just you, not just me, the best way to start and make the slate clean is by repenting. That's how we start 2019. We repent and we say, you know what? I want to repent, Lord, of sins that are known and sins that are unknown. Habits, concepts, anything in my mind that I just want to um, uh, reiterate or put in the place of God. Um, then, you know what, we're just going to release that and say, I want God's plan for my life. And Darlene, I want God's plan for your life. So God bless you, and um, praying that you fulfill everything God has for you. Yes, Darlene. I <laughs> love you so much, too, my dear. And I, I agree with my sister, um, Deborah, for you. Amen. I did, you know, I did want to say that um, you are one. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, I did, Jeannie, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, because for, if anyone's listening and they're like, all right, sounds good. We hear about her life. How did she get to this place of surrender right. with God? You know, and it took a while. When I first had an encounter with God, I went to a Christian church. I saw his presence. I knew that this was a love deeper than I had ever felt before. But I had so many idols. I had so many things in the way of me and my God. And, you know, going into 2019, truthfully, it's like, and I don't care if we've been Christians forever or not. We tend, as humans, we tend to put things before God, even our own ambitions, our own resolutions, our own goals. You know, and, and, and my, my advice to anyone would be, it wasn't until I finally realized that apart from God, whatever I do will, is not going to be fulfilling. We'll continue it's to not. be feeling like, you know, nev like you know the, the popular pop song, I Can't Get No Satisfaction? That is exactly <laughs> what sin, that is, a, that is a direct reflection of what, where sin leads you or a life exactly without right. Jesus. That's you know, right. we can't That's get bad. satisfaction, even with, no. the, even with good things. There's no satisfaction unless there's God. Absolutely God's right. There's no fulfillment. Why? Because we were created yeah. to have relationship with God. Yeah. You know, He was fine just on His own in His heaven. He didn't have to make us. He didn't have to make this earth. But there was a void in the earth. There was a darkness, and He looked down and He spoke into that darkness, yeah. and He said, "Let." There be light. Amen. And if anyone today is feeling a void in their heart, there's a darkness, there's that emptiness, like you were speaking of, Jeannie. And you know, there's just not there's just not a fulfillment. There's something missing. 
speak to it and may the light of Christ come in yes. and say, Lord God, you're gonna you're gonna shine down, you're gonna breathe the breath of life into this body. Mm-hmm. The past is over, it's not working anymore. There's a page turning. But some people, Jeannie, they don't continue, they don't persevere, exactly. they don't um go forward they get one small opposition and then they quit but what would have happened if you looked back there's no turning back i love that song i have decided to follow jesus i love that song because it's no turning back so what happens is we turn the page and we turn the page and we turn the page and we get to the end of the book and finally we read that we win yes we win. And it's truly embracing your identity. You know, and, and even if you're a literal foster kid, you know what I mean? God is our father. And we have, we can embrace spiritually our, 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 our physical lives. We can embrace the spiritual heritage that we have in Christ Jesus and really be fulfilled here on earth like he wants us to be and you know it it does take disciplines like pastor neil was saying i mean you need to yeah. you need to know someone to be in love with someone you need to That's know right. someone to trust someone with your life and if you read the bible if you spend time in the presence of god he will show you who he is yeah. and it doesn't compare it does not compare you know it doesn't compare because now people are thinking well you know i've had people that have loved me and left me before this is the kind of love that is mm. eternal. Mm. The Word of God never passes away. Yeah. He's not a man that he should lie. He didn't say, do what I say. He said, do what I do. Mm. And he showed, he demonstrated his love for us like never before. So, you know, in 2019, it's my prayer, Jeannie, not only for you, but also for our listeners that they're going to seek God with all of their hearts. That they'll find that place of fulfillment mm-hmm. and forgiveness and that they will understand the value, the order, the um, the priorities that we have to have in our life mm-hmm. in order to fulfill all God has for us. I pray that 2019 would be a time that we understand worship, true worship, mm-hmm. which Jesus described as in spirit and in truth. We seek true wisdom, as we were discussing today, which really can, not, it's not really a degree or taking certain courses in the college. It comes from the wisdom of God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And I would also suggest that people take one proverb a day. Read one chapter in Proverbs a day. So today is, for example, uh, January the 5th. So read Proverbs 5 today. And tomorrow you read Proverbs 6. And get in your word. I also strongly suggest that every believer, whether you're a speaker or whether you've walked with the Word for years, you start with uh, the book of John, and you're going to read it from the beginning to the end. And when you're done, you read it from the beginning to the end, even just a chapter or a few verses today, uh, each day. Let's start to get to know our Lord. Let's start to get to know what He says about us, what He's done for us. You know, let's do what the Bible says. Take the Word of God and write it on the tablets of our hearts so that we don't sin against God. What does that mean? Sin against God means having detours, meaning going a different way that will take us off the path and the destiny for our life. And also we want to seek the wealth that God has, the wealth of the riches of his love, that we are to seek God first and his kingdom, which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And all of those things will be added unto us. Well, you know, as we close our show, I just want to say, Jeannie, you've been an awesome guest. I pray God's richest blessing on your life, both for you and Ren, your family, your ministry. Uh, I'm so just, I can't tell you how grateful I am for your friendship to know that we can link arms together. I'm not alone. I know that together we're going to do great things for God and he's going to be glorified. Amen. And you know what? I am so proud of this venture that you're doing and just the fact that the people will be able to hear true, solid sound advice and words of, from God through through you. Sis, I'm so proud of you, so proud of this. And I love, I love, I love, I love um, the, the tag of this show, You Are Wanted, because that's the yeah, truth. Yeah, you and we are need wanted. To know. We, that's, that's to me, that's the theme of, of this year is owning your, oh, yes, owning your identity. You yeah, that's right. Our identity, wanted. which is in Jesus Christ. And right. you can follow us on Twitter at 
you are wanted WGBB. That's at the letter U, the letter R, wanted WGBB. Or you can log on to www.debravalentine.com. Um, and also, I just want to remind you that uh, I am the founder of Women of Worth. We meet every Saturday at uh, 203 East Pulaski Road in Huntington Station, New York. Women only. Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. That's where I'm going right now after the show. So I want to thank Ginny Ortega for her time today. Uh, we pray a blessing over her life. And if anyone here um, would like to write me, you can write me at Deborah at DebraValentine.com. May the Lord bless you. We'll see you next Saturday right here at AM 1240 WGBB or on the web at AM 1240 WGBB.com. Saturday morning, 9 to 10 AM, you are wanted.